From the Delta Sky Club. Welcome back, Miss Klein. To the Jet Bridge. Delta Airlines relies on 5G solutions from T-Mobile for business to power operations and serve customers faster. Together, we're putting 5G into the hands of ground staff so they can better assist on-the-go travelers with real-time information throughout the airport. This is elevating customer experience. This is Delta Airlines with T-Mobile for business. Take your business further at T-Mobile.com slash now. Welcome back to the Chicago Tomahawk. I'm Mike. I got my lineman Matt with me. Today, we're going to go over the Blackhawks' uh, first, you know, somewhat first three games and some uh, some hockey news. So, the Blackhawks are 1-1-1. One, one, and one. Um, Honestly, I think that they look better as each game goes on. Uh, the first game was was pretty rough. Uh, last game, they actually beat Edmonton. I, was, I didn't think that the, their first win of the season was going to be against Edmonton, but... Um, you know, I, maybe Edmonton just starts slow. Who knows? Maybe they have a, a bad first half of the game and then they went first half of the season, then turn it on like they did last year straight to the cup final. But um, anyways, uh, Connor Bedard scored his first goal this season in the last game. I think he's got two multi-point games so far. Uh, Lucas Reichel is still, um, he's still on the bench. Apparently... <laughs> Uh, to be honest with you, man, um, Taylor Hall isn't looking too hot right now. And uh, I think Lucas Reichel uh, should get an opportunity if nothing changes with Hall in like another, say, 10 games or so. What do you think about that? Yeah, I just don't understand why we why we make a big deal about him wanting to play better, but you don't even give him a chance. <laughs> And uh, they're going to be like, well, yeah, Lucas isn't where he's supposed to be. Is that because of his effort in practice? Or, I mean, they're, he's better than at least six guys that are playing right now. Yeah, You have, you have to admit that. And uh, I, I guess they don't want him on the fourth line, but okay, I understand that. But like you said, Taylor Hall's kind of starting off slow. He He was injured last year. It's going to take him a while to get back in the game for him. I'm, you know, you got to give him a little bit. Uh, yeah, man, I'd like to see him play, get a shot. The poor kid's got to have to score a hat trick in his first shift to yeah. probably get a spot in the lineup. Because I, I don't know, man. I, I just don't. I don't get the. Some guys get it different, you know, and some Lucas is getting it different in a negative way. You know, it's it's funny because in the article that I wrote a couple of weeks ago, I mentioned specifically Alexis Lafreniere needed about four seasons before he could start producing um, at a, at a pretty decent level, and he got that uh, last year. Scored twenty eight goals last year. What did he get this year? An eight million dollar contract by eight years. And Is that official? Let me double check because that's what I saw. I saw that too, and I could not believe my. I, I couldn't believe it. And after hearing, we'll get into it later. The 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 all world goaltender turning down all that money. I don't know how they're going to be able to afford half the team with that. So yeah, that's crazy. That but that's the me. rumor. I thought, yeah, I thought that's. I thought that was. Uh, I thought that was in because you sent that to me, didn't you? Yeah, I, I believe that's that's the rumor right now. Where they're kind of going the Jack Hughes route. It looks like. And hey, that could pay off with the cap going up, but I'm not sure if it's official yet. Yeah, it's not official yet. But you um, know what? If it's out there like that, somebody obviously leaked it. So it, it can be very. It could be like a a model of the Jack Hughes deal. There, they, they think he's going to be a stub like that, which he is good. And you know what? It, they were patient with him, and it's nice to see. You, you got a first round pick and. You believe in him and you want him to succeed. You put him in positions to succeed. And look, he had a breakout year last year. So I was hoping Lucas would get that. But so far, no dice. No dice, yeah. Uh, and, you know, to, you know, on on uh, Alexis's, you know, on his side, man, at least he, he plays, man. You know, his last three seasons, he played 79, 81, 82. You know, Jack is hurt, you know, practically half the time. But um, I think Lucas Reichel deserves that opportunity. It takes a lot of time, 
And um, and apparently a lot of people, they just can't wait for him. And what's going to happen is, is that they're not going to give him that opportunity. He's going to go somewhere where they need um, a player like him. Watch it be the Devils. And um, <laughs> and, and he turns into, a, into a, a good player, a good offensive player. A fifty assist man. You yeah, know, and he yeah. was getting yeah, oh, God, I would kill and, and then uh, and then Richardson's looking for another team to coach by that time, you know. And yeah, man. What do you think about that him? happens? What do you, you think know, about Richardson's first three games? I'm I'm a little confused by some of the things. You, that, you know, here's here's sorry. my thing with, with Richardson is that um I don't think that he I think that he is a good coach, but one of his shortcomings is he doesn't know how to develop players. And um, I think that his expectations for certain types of players are, um, I think that they're kind of out there. Like Lucas Reichel, for instance, you know, they want him to, they want him to be offensive, but they don't want him to lose anything uh, defensively. And that doesn't make sense. That's like saying, hey, um, hey, Patrick Kane, um, we want you to create offense, but we want you to play better defense. Yeah, it's like, no, dude. Team. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's <laughs> like, no, he's a hundred point, uh, a hundred point uh, a game guy. You know, who is the last person to score a hundred points and win the Selkie? Ser- Sergey Fedorov, you know? So, maybe. Um, and he was, he actually scored 50 goals that year too. But be- before I start digressing, um, Reichel deserves that opportunity and Richard Richardson isn't getting isn't giving that to him. And I think that's what his um I think that Richardson is what's holding Reichel back, to be honest with you. And it's the same thing with Korchinski, because to be honest with you, it's the same thing. It's the same story with both players. Korchinski is an offensive defenseman that likes to skate with the puck and create offense. Uh, there are a lot of guys as a matter, there's a lot of guys who have done it. You know, Eric Carlson has um he's won a Norris trophy doing that. And Richardson wants him to be it's not that I don't want him to play defense, but it's I want him to play his game. And Richardson can't see, for some reason can't say, okay, you know what? If this is his style of game, why don't I pair him with this type of player? Uh, someone like Siebes or something like a Sieb yeah. type, like Nolan Allen. Classic. Let's just say yeah. Nolan Allen, right? And instead, he's like, oh, he's not ready. So we're going to send him down to Rockford. And, oh, yeah, Reichel's not ready. Uh, he's not developing quick enough, and he's not doing, um, he's not playing the way we want him to play. And it's like, okay, how about you let him play the way that he does play? And why don't we move the offense around so that we can accommodate these offensive guys so that we can get some offensive production? Because I think, you know, we're, we're having a hard time scoring goals up until this last game. You know, so why don't we play to some of these guys' strengths? Do, do you see that with Richardson at all? I, I kind of see a little bit of Q in him and not the good part of Q. Mm-hmm. Like, something ain't working. He's going to flip the lines after one game. And the, Felino, the first line, I mean, yeah, okay, it paid off. Good for you. But something's up with the Oilers starting early, like you said. I mean, that team was dead to rights last year in like November, December. Yeah. And they absolutely turned it around and made it to the final. But that they're having some problems. I mean, goaltending is not that great. New players. And, and kudos to Bedard. He took over that game, man. Yeah, he, he was did. really good. So was Tevu. He's yeah, he had great. like two points. Those guys have been great together. That has been a great little signing uh, out of nowhere, too. I mean, you didn't really... I didn't hear anything about Tevu Teravine and wanting to come back to Chicago, but he did. And it's been paying off for Bedard. They both got five points tied for the, the lead this year. I love that. I'm, I'm hoping to see a little bit more out of Bertuzzi, but you know he's got to get opportunities. And I, I think Davidson is just so... I, it, it seems Richardson, like, I, I, I got to change this. I got to change this. It's got to go here. I got to go here. I don't yeah. like this guy here. And that's what Q did all the time. And it drove me freaking nuts. Yeah, me too. And you got to let guys develop, especially early. Get chemistry. Don't change it. You're just kind of digging a little hole for yourself. And it's like, okay, that's not working. Let's try this. And what if that doesn't work? Then you got to do it again. So I think he should be a little bit more patient. Obviously, you want to keep Tevu and Bedard because it's working great. I'd even like to see Kurashev with those dudes because I don't know if you saw that play. Bedard was tripped. He made a hell of a one-handed pass on his knees, and 
I think it was to Kirsch, or no, it was Tevu. And if he would have buried that, that would have been the play of the year. I mean, the the, the chemistry with these guys, some of these guys, you got to leave it together. Um, I, I I don't I don't know how I feel about Felino on that first line. I think he kind of he slows them down a little bit. You know, he's obviously older. Yes, he's out there. He's creating a little space. He's a kind of a banger type role guy now who's going to get in the corners and do some dirty work. But I, I just, I think we need to put all the speed and talent up front just to compete in this league. And I, good, it worked, I guess, you know, with Edmonton, but it's not going to work against really good teams like, say, like your Bostons and Colorados and stuff like that. Dallas, you, you got you to gotta load up up front and just, you know, ready, ready to rock, you know, and I, you know what, Soderblom, that game against the Jets, man, he was fantastic, and the Hawks just, they could they couldn't hold, it was like last year, they always give up a goal in the minute left in the game, and yeah. then they blow it in OT, and I felt so bad for that kid, because he played great, he and you know, everybody hates him, you know, they, yeah. they, every all the Hawks fans don't want him, they're trying to run him out. We need a, what's that, uh, the kid we signed from the Jets, Brissouad or something? Yeah. Oh, I can't wait till he's back because we can get rid of Soderbaum. Dude, if he plays like that, leave him up, dude. It's incredible. Right. That was a great performance. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, and to be honest with you, I think that there's a, there is a, a spot for Reichel in the top six. Um, yeah, if you sure. want, you could play him, put him on that second line with Bertuzzi. And, uh, and and Kurashev, if that's where they're going to put him, um, maybe it'd be a good idea to have Kurashev on that top line. Uh, but, I think so. It, but if they're going to do that, you know, we could have Reichel and um, and Bertuzzi and even Hall on that on that second line, man. Well, and if Hall can't get it together, I mean, you might have to send him down to a line, you know. And that's when yeah. you you call the kid, let the kid let the kid play. Yeah, I, mean, I don't know. I, I see all these guys that are anti Reichel and quick. They're it's really crazy. quick to like bookmark my comments about him. Uh, oh yeah, you said this about him. Yeah, because he's he's good. He's a good player. He needs he needs development. And you guys all preach development. And, but oh yeah, he's a bust. He's a bust. You're the first people to say bust. But the right. poor kid hasn't even gotten a minute yet. How can right. you say that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, he hasn't gotten a minute yet. And yeah. uh, he's only played one season, and he didn't even play the full season. <laughs> and now we have better talent. We have better right. talent to surround him with. Which right. it, w- this is this is the whole point of this. This uh, Reichel is supposed to be one of the top guys with Bedard. You know that's on the team right now, and he's a healthy scratch. So I'm not sure w- at, at this point. Send the kid down. At least yeah. at least Rockford is going to be like an elite Red Wing team down there with prospects <laughs> in the 90s. Yeah. I mean, look, look at Korchinski. He skated through the whole team yesterday. He had an incredible coast to coast goal. Yeah. He he's had too a, good I'm, for that league. He I'm is. sorry. He's and too it's, good. It's the problem. This is the problem that I I've been preaching is that pe- what people don't understand is that the AHL isn't a step down from the NHL. It's like five steps down in competition. So, yeah, sure. Korchinski is like, you know, he's not skating through guys at the NHL level, but he's way too good to be playing in the in the AHL. And if, okay, so say we're looking to get him some some confidence, some playing time, time on, on the top line. Sure, I Give get it. Give it to him. <laughs> yeah. But, Go ahead. Yeah. But it's like, why don't we let him do that here? You know, let him develop here the same thing with Allen they should pair him with Allen for that third pairing and let those guys go out there and 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 learn together man yeah give them 10 15 minutes a game no 15's a lot give him give him 10 minutes a game you know i mean he he's better than murphy he's uh, kaiser is kaiser had a good game yesterday that was his first game right. he, i think he got an assist actually uh yeah but he did it, he should be up there rotating with these guys at least but they, right. they don't they don't want him sitting like Reichel for some reason. But they they'll let Reichel sit there and rot. I I don't, I don't right. understand it. It's weird. Yeah, it's like are they trying to send a message because you know nobody's really getting it. And well, you know, they're going to give you the same line. Reichel's not playing good enough to fit in the role we need him at. Well, okay, Reichel preseason. Not one hawk played good in preseason. Right. No, I'm sorry. That's on the current roster. It wasn't. It's not about performance in preseason. It's about getting your reps in, getting your minutes down, getting in game shape. It's not about okay, Reichel, you only scored three goals or what. It's not about that. It's about 
just getting back at it. That's what it's all. It's never been, there's no championship for preseason. So right. I don't know. Sometimes, like I said this last year, sometimes the Hawks management thinks their fans are stupid and they, yeah. they talk to you and they, they'll try to give you an ex, like a, a reason for something. And it's like, okay, this isn't 1990 anymore. Bill Wirtz isn't here to talk down to his fans. It's not like that. We're we're not stupid. So say you want the kid or you don't want the kid. I, I personally, if you're not going to play him, trade him. I'd like to see him succeed somewhere else because I think he's a good talent. I think he is too, and I think that he will. And and, uh, and then the Hawks are going to look like freaking idiots from it, you know. Imagine a world where your technology helps you rather than hinders you. Together, we can power your tech strategy with one platform and infinite possibilities. At NCR Voix, we help you build differentiated experiences that make sense for your retail and restaurant businesses. Let's define the future of commerce together. Learn more at ncrvoix.com. ncrvoix.com. It's time to have your high five moment with High Five Casino, the top social casino where the action and real prizes never stop. Fun spins and big wins are right at your fingertips with over a thousand games, including High Five Casino exclusives. High Five Casino is always free to play with free coins given out every four hours. Sign up today and get free welcome coins you can spin for a chance at cash prizes. Visit HighFiveCasino.com. High Five Casino. No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. Must be 21 years or older. Terms and conditions apply. Your dining room is the heart of your home, where meals are shared and memories are made. At Ashley, you'll find affordable dining furniture in a range of classic and modern styles. Ashley's small space sets and extendable tables are designed to fit beautifully into any space, from cozy breakfast nooks and kitchens to formal dining areas fit for a feast. And with mix-and-match seating options, everyone at your table gets the perfect seat. At Ashley, style is served. Shop in store or online today. So moving on, the Hawks' next game is uh, versus the Flames on Tuesday night. Let us know if you can watch it. <laughs> and and uh, Utah is off to a three and zero start. Uh, I'll tell you what, man, these guys are on fire right now. Nobody saw this happening. No, and I, um, I thought that would have been our first win of the year. Quite honestly, dude. Yeah, I, I thought did we'd too. be one and two, and that would have been our only win. But it's been weird. <laughs> Yeah, it has. Um, Shesterkin turns down an eighty million dollar contract from the Rangers, and we we predicted this. We knew this was going to be a um, a war, and in the negotiating, uh, there's no way he's taking eight million. No way he's taking Jeremy Swayman money. And so, um, I think he's going to get thirteen, dude. Thirteen. I'm I gonna think say like 12. they're gonna. He's starting higher, and maybe they're going to meet somewhere. But I mean. He's he's gonna be the highest paid goalie, which is crazy because you know he's he's got Vesnas, that's great, no cup. I think he, he's good enough to win a cup. I think that team's window is this year. It's gonna be closed if they don't win. But if they sign him to that long term eight mil or uh, thirteen mil eight years, I still don't I don't see the Rangers keeping some of the guys that they have to do. They're up against the cap. Yeah, you know, they got Breadman up there. They're probably gonna lose True Bud eight million. Um, they're saying not, I wouldn't a, consider that a loss. Yeah, but you know what? I, in the playoffs, that's a guy you want on your lineup. That rugged, mean defenseman. I mean, I would love that guy. You know, yeah, but he costs them opportunities. He goes into the penalty box when right when they don't need him to. You know, he does that kind of stuff a lot. Yeah, but then Zabanajab, he kind of dropped a little bit. He was really good a couple like two years ago. I want to say he was like money, good finisher, and he kind of had a rough season. So I think. Maybe they'll be okay. They're probably going to think, okay, we're going to pay Igor. We're going to pay Lafreniere this, and we're going to lose him, and stuff's going to kind of even out. But, man, I, that's, I've never – that's a lot of money for a goal. He's going to be the highest-paid player on the team. And you know what? Maybe he is the best on that team. I mean, he if you take him away, that team is – you know, they're, they're decent, but yeah. Yeah, I don't see him a top-three team, you know, in their right. division at all. What about Capo Caco? I think he's going to get a small bridge, kind of like probably Kirby Doc steal, like maybe like a three, four million for like two, three years if they even keep him. Hey, maybe Reichel's going to go that way for Kako with the way that, 
You know, it's it's weird. I thought when we traded Kane, why not ask for Kako? You know, yeah. Be like, hey, let's 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 try to sneak that in, but we you know we didn't get anything good for it. But you know, if if sometimes a change of scene, uh, change of scene will uh, do a player good. I know a lot of half the people on the Twitter. They're always kind of weary. They're hey, he's all right. Some days, oh, he's terrible. Sit him. Put this guy in and. It, there, there's like a Reichel on every team, it seems like, dude. You know? <laughs> yeah, no kidding. So, um, so Matt, if you were the Rangers, and obviously you know that you're going to have to play Shesterkin, where would you start? If you needed to cut money, who would be the first guy? Probably Truba. Why? Um, like for, you said. For, uh, for like what, what was previously mentioned? Well, for what he does, he's a he's a stay at home first kind of guy who, who you know eventually gets some okay numbers for what he does. But uh, you know you got that Keandre Miller who's good. Yeah. I'd, I'd kind of pay him. Truba's getting a little bit older. It seems like that was the rumor in the summer. Like Truba was on the move, but he didn't want to waive his trade clause or something like that because I guess his wife is big in the uh, medical field in New York. So he wanted to stay, but if you could, I would probably move him first. That would make the most sense. Yeah. And then you got that eight mil. You're probably going to have, like you said earlier with Lafreniere, he's probably going to get close to that. Maybe if he has another good season, like putting up almost 30 something goals, he might get that. Uh, I don't know how long Brad's got left. I think he's got a couple seasons at, I think he's at 10 million, right? Yeah. 10 or 11 or something. 10 or 10.5 or something like that. So it's tough. You're gonna you're gonna lose quick, which he's not a big, not a big cap hit, but he's a great backup goalie at this point in his career. Uh, best American goalie of all time, I think. Honestly, I think he's got the better most than Ryan wins. Miller. I think he, I think he passed him in wins. Yeah, I think he is better than Ryan Miller, and I like Miller. He, you know, he never won. Quick's got two cups, big part of both cups. I think he was an MVP on one of them, and he. Just that they the first year that they won, they they had no business winning the cup that year, and he the guy was incredible. Uh, I, I don't know. I'm not really familiar with their roster, but they bring in some guys every year. To I think that Vinny Trocheck has been a good signing for them. Yeah, I think last year he had a really good year with Panarin. He's kind of a kind of a two way forward, two way center. Plays good D, puts up good numbers. You got to keep him. Zabanajev, he might be the odd man out. You know, once this big salary with uh, Shesterkin plays through. So I think Mika and uh, Truba will probably be on their way out. Wow. Not not a Rangers guy. We'd have to talk to our old buds, you know, the uh, 30 on Broadway boys. They probably yeah, have more too. intel on that than us. But uh, I know they're, they were big Igor guys back then when we used to meet up with these guys. They loved him. And you know what? I honestly didn't see him enough. I'd be like, Gee. Get out of here. Lundquist was way better than this guy. Blah, blah, blah. Mike Richter is way better. But, dude, he, he is a good goalie. But, hey, Mike Richter hoisted the cup in 94. Yeah, I haven't did. seen a Ranger goaltender do that since. That's true. Um, Twitter. T- oh, so, Twitter war with Tampa fans and Avs fans. What's going on with that? Dude, this is crazy. Uh, it's every day. I, I don't know if you noticed this. So, when Kucherov has a good game, the Avs fans are all over this guy. He had a hat trick the other night, and he scored an open net, and he got the he got the hattie on the open netter. And they're like, "Oh, look at this casual guy gets an open net goal! What a point!" Like I think they called him a point whore or something. But <laughs> the dude's incredible. And, and then McKinnon has a fit the other night. And they lost to the Blue Jackets. I think he was throwing a stick on the ice. That. He got a ten minute game misconduct. The Tampa fans come right back. Oh. Big bad Nate didn't get his way. He's throwing a stick, and I'm, and here's me in the middle. Jerry yeah. Seinfeld gif eating the popcorn, just just yeah. watching. This is great, and dude, I love this. I love this. Yeah, uh, this little rivalry that's kind of starting with Cooch Cooch's MVP runs, and you know Nate McKinnon's a superstar, and these guys are. Going like last year, back and forth. Nate would get four points. Cooch would come back with five. Nate would get six, and they just all year they were just neck and neck in that point race. I loved it, but the yeah. fans are insane. Like they just they hate each other, and you know what? The NHL's got to take advantage of this because yeah. when they meet, 
you got to bring this rivalry like game. I mean, it, it's almost like Colorado Avalanche back in the or uh, Detroit back Wings? in the day. Yeah, that rivalry was great, and now it was. It, now it's a scoring rivalry. Like who is who's better? You know, and I yeah. mean the NHL's got to take advantage of this because this is good. I mean, I, I love this kind of stuff. Yeah, they're like, oh, Big Nate. <laughs> I saw that, Dan. Yeah, Big Nate's <laughs> throwing a stick. You know, and then, then the... I was the, like, what's he so pissed off about? Well, he won the heart last year. I mean, yeah, I, I kind of thought Cooch deserved it. Uh, I'm, I got a little bit of Tampa Roots in me, so I, I like Cooch. I think he's a great player. I laughed my ass off at the All-Star game when he was just dogging it because there's no way he wanted to be there. He, he's like, yeah. I want to go to the beach and relax with my buds. You know, we got a long yeah. playoff run coming. And he goes out there, he's scoring goals. He just didn't give a shit. I mean, I, I like that, you know, but he, he still showed up. He didn't. You could tell he didn't want to be there, but... Dude, he's incredible. He, I, how many assists did he have? Like, he had like a hundred something assists last season. That's incredible. Really yeah. good player. So this week, I posted. I saw a post on Twitter. It was about Datsuk going into the Hall of Fame, and my question is: How can Datsuk go into the Hall of Fame, and Alexander Mogilny is not in the Hall of Fame? Um, <laughs> Mogilny's got just as many cups as Datsuk has, doesn't he? I'm not sure how many cups he has. Didn't he win cups with New Jersey? Like yeah, two? I think, yeah, I think he's got uh, two or three. So he's got two, one cup. He's got one cup in 99. Okay. And that was with the Devils. Okay. Um, so Datsuk's got more, he's got more cups, but he's nowhere near in points. But but cups are, it's a team thing too. Right. So Datsuk wasn't out there, you know, the whole team like McDavid was last season. That'd be different, right. but like I, I got Amog's uh, stats right in front of me. So his best season of scoring goals was in 1993 with Buffalo. Mm-hmm. In 77 games played, he scored 76 goals. One game he did not assists. score. Yes, 51 <laughs> assists, 127 points. That was his best season. Um. I can't say the same for Datsuk. His best season was, I believe it was with Tosa. 32, 32 goals. And his most points, I think, were 87. He did 87 twice, back to back. Oh, I'm sorry, 97. 2008, he got 97 points, 31 goals, and 66 assists. That's a good season, a plus 41. Yes, probably a better two way player than. Uh, Mokinley, but Alexander Mokinley, a lot of these kids on here probably have never seen him play. Yeah, uh, he had 473 goals, 559 assists, 1032 points, and a plus 81 in 990 uh, games. Yes, in 990 games, and he kind of just fell off the face of the earth. He, he kind of just he, he just vanished. And no one really heard about like what happened to him, but we have Datsuk's points nine nine hundred eighteen, and he had nine fifty three games played, three hundred fourteen goals, and six hundred four assists. So statistically, Mogenly was a better player. Two way player, yeah, probably give it give it to Datsuk. He played better in his own end, but yeah, he did. I mean. I saw one of the comments on your on your little thread. I guess you could call it. They the Hall of Fame has like a hard on for individual awards. That's what one guy said, and I think Datsuk only won a Selkie. I want to say, I and obviously or a Lady Bing. I think he won two, but he he has three Selkies, three Stanley Cups, and he has. Four Lady Bings. I think that's uh, like a discipline type of player, uh, with, like, like less the nicest penalty. guy or something, right? Or something yeah, like, that. like a gentlemanly type thing. But <laughs> yeah, uh, not sure about. I'm looking at Mulganley. I don't think he had that many individual ones, which is, I don't think that should matter, you know. But 500 or not. I'm sorry. He, he was very close to 500 goals. Usually that's a like a guaranteed in once you hit that 500 goal plateau and he's very yeah. close. It's like 30 away or whatever. And uh 
well, look how long it took for Ronick to get in. You know, maybe <laughs> this could be a next year. We'll hear Alexander Mogenli has been nominated for the Hall of Fame. And we're going to be like, shit, we were just talking about that last year. Why he should be in. But yeah, if you're if you're picking like, you know, you're looking at classes each year. I definitely think this dude should have been in before Datsuk and Shane yeah. Weber. I know they play yeah. different positions, but come on. These guys just retired like a couple seasons ago. Yeah. And and I'm not saying that Datsuk isn't deserving to go into the Hall of Fame. I'm saying that Mogilny should have gone in before him. Same with Steve Larmer. He, his numbers are very yeah. similar to that. Yeah. I don't think he's ever scored 70 goals or not even close, but very good player back in the day. He was like the man on the Hawks for like a decade. You know? Him I don't think Larmer, were, um, I don't think he ever missed a game. I think he missed one game and it ruined his, I, I think it was over a contract dispute possibly or something, but he, yeah, he had a good little Ironman streak. I know Tony Amani had a good one. Uh, Phil Kessels was unbelievable too. And then he couldn't get a team in, but technically dude, if Phil came back, I think his streak should, I mean, he doesn't have it a team. Still count. Yeah. It should still count. I mean, he, yeah. it's not like he, he's injured or anything. He just doesn't have a contract. Right. I wonder but if yeah, he would, if, great. If that he, was a great take. I, I 100% agree with you on that. I think Mogenli should, should have obviously got a look before Datsuk. And quite honestly, I, I know Hosa is a Hall of Fame player too, but. I mean that's that's another miss by them. This Mogenli, even Ronick should have got looked at before that. I mean, you shouldn't just skip unless it's like a Cindy Crosby like type of player. Yeah. And Shea Weber? Come on, really? That's insane. Yeah. Barkov is out two to three weeks for the Panthers with an injury. Celebrini is out as well, a week to week for the Sharks with an injury. So Did you see his um, first game? Uh, I saw that move that he had. It was really impressive. Dude, could you imagine if we got him? If we got, that I first, know, man. That that would have been it. You're gonna do this to me. <laughs> that would have been it. That would have been it. That's Kane and Taves right there. That would have been our new Kane and Taves. That would have been unreal. Oh man. Yeah, and it looks like he likes to wear those old like CCM type of skates. Did you see that? Were those the tax? Yeah, like the old tax <laughs> ones that. Uh, I think he's ones, a good kid, man. Yeah, the ones he's, that uh, Chelly nice used to kid. wear. Yeah. Yeah. The old, they have a newer version of them. I still, uh, I think our buddy Q the Dagger, he he's got a podcast on here. He's a hawk guy. Yeah, he he was just telling me like we were talking about. What do you think about these? Um, and he said they're 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 ugly. They've always been ugly. And I'm like, yeah, I agree with you. They got that white little <laughs> that white stripe going down the side. Yeah, uh, they're vintage looking. That's how they used to do it back then. Yeah, they are. They're very vintage. As long as they're not a thousand bucks, like most skates are, that's what you Yeah, is they are, man. It's I absolutely can't believe the price. crazy how much skates are. Like, for, if you're going to, I mean, if you're looking to get the, like, with the, like, the top of the line skates, those bad boys are a thousand bucks a piece or oh, eleven hundred bucks a piece. Um, uh, yeah. no matter who you, um, no matter which brand you go with. If I'm paying that much for the skates, they better move for me. That's all yeah, I'm saying, no and kidding. I can pick my speed because it's going to be McDavid speed. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I get it, man. You know, there's you know inflation and all that stuff, but at the same time, dude, um, you know, like holy smoke, a thousand dollars for skates. <laughs> you know what's great? The hockey's for everybody thing. <laughs> no, not with that price. It's not no, for everybody. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no <laughs> not kidding, even man. Rich people want to pay not, that. Yeah, it's nuts. You know, you got to get everything at uh, play it against sports. Good store though. Yeah, yeah it is. Some good. You'll find some antiques in that place. <laughs> I saw. I saw an old waffle school uh, uh, Cooper blocker. You know the waffle pattern. Oh yeah, I bought it. I I couldn't Did let you? that go. I bought it. Yep. I'm it's just a decoration. It's beautiful. It's in my man cave right behind me. It, <laughs> it's a GM20 Durasoft <laughs> Cooper. And it, it dude, it's it's awesome. Vintage. I don't know how they used it. It's almost like it feels like an oven mitt. I couldn't imagine getting a slap shot with that thing right there. Wow, that it bad. probably hurt for days. <laughs> Well, all right, everybody, that's all that we got for you this week. Hit us up on Twitter. We're on there. We're talking to everybody. I uh, love talking hockey, and uh, we'll catch you on the next one. This is Tomahawk. We're out of here. It's- 
It's time to have your high five moment with High Five Casino, the top social casino where the action and real prizes never stop. Fun spins and big wins are right at your fingertips with over a thousand games, including High Five Casino exclusives. High Five Casino is always free to play with free coins given out every four hours. Sign up today for a free welcome offer that can get you spinning and winning right away. Visit HighFiveCasino.com. High Five Casino. No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited by law. Must be 21 years or older. Terms and conditions apply. Your dining room is the heart of your home, where meals are shared and memories are made. At Ashley, you'll find affordable dining furniture in a range of classic and modern styles. Ashley's small space sets and extendable tables are designed to fit beautifully into any space, from cozy breakfast nooks and kitchens to formal dining areas fit for a feast. And with mix-and-match seating options, everyone at your table gets the perfect seat. At Ashley, style is served. Shop in-store or online today.